Can you post? I did post. Oh wait, we're live. Yes. We're live in Facebook. Yes. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, can you post our link on... Once again. I'm not as good as multitasking as you are. Right. People, you gotta know one thing about David. He's crazy on multitasking. He could stream on five, six, seven, eight different platforms. Yeah, we want the world to know about this topic, man. So you're gonna post a link on Twitch, right? Twitch TV? Hold on. Our Amazon link? Yes. Perfect. All right. So while Jeremy is getting that figured out, we'd like to welcome everyone to New Tech Bia. Today we're talking about cable modems, whether you should rent one or buy one. And we're going to talk about a story of Jeremy's frustration trying to figure out what cable service provider to go with and what he ultimately decided and why he has such a huge dilemma. I haven't ultimately out. designed anything yet. Still researching. Still deciding, so he hasn't. But I've already chosen my choice. I'm with Comcast and I have the Netgear CM1100 modem fantastic modem that I recommend the newer one the 1200 modem but we'll talk into a, a little bit more detail which one I would recommend and why plus you have some options out there and of course there's right. an option to always rent as well so Jeremy's ready we posted all our links and we are good to go so hello everyone and welcome to Utechpia again we're talking about modem cable modems today should you rent one or should you buy one and we got a little story and we'll let you let Jeremy start off with his story on why he's so uh, so energetic about this topic today. I want to know how far do I go back. This is like a really long history with this AT&T company. Okay, before we do that then, let, <laughs> before we talk about the history, um, this is a quick answer. Should you rent or buy a modem? I, hope, I highly, highly recommend just buying the modem because number one, you own it and you can buy a really good one that will last you for like five years. If you buy a gigabit mm -hmm. modem right now, chances are you probably will not update it in a long time. And if you rent one, they usually give you cheap ones and also ones that have been refurbished and then have been used for many years already and it's, it's on its last leg of technology too. So just because you rent one, you think they always give you the latest and greatest, actually they don't. They, they, they have an older stock of modem and until those die out or until they are simply not compatible anymore with their current service, then they update you to a new one. If you buy one, you get the latest, greatest right now and this, it'll last you for a good five years or so. Now, if you buy one, you also save a lot of money because if you buy one, you can find a good deal. You probably buy one for between a hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. Right now, prices are closer to no, not fifteen hundred. Sorry, if you buy one, one fifty. Yeah, it's between like fifteen hundred dollars. It's between a hundred to hundred fifty. Are you on high? <laughs> no, I'm not high. But because bright prices are being gouged right now, that's why they're a little bit closer to hundred and fifty dollars. Normally, if you wait for good deals, you can get them for about hundred dollars. But regardless of that, yeah. between hundred to hundred fifty, you're still going to save in the long run because if you rent modem, it's about fifteen dollars to rent. And that's not even the bottom of it because renting is such a hassle because when it's time to upgrade to another one, you have to return the old one or when you're moving, you have to actually physically bring back the modem to them. Make sure they give you credit because if you don't bring back the modem to them, even though you cancel your internet, they'll still charge you for the modem and it's just a headache. I'd rather own my modem and set it up and it's good to go. So just so just, uh, you get to the point before we talk, talk, to our, talk about Jeremy's story, the simple modem to get is the one I have, which I recommend the CM1200. I actually have the CM1100, which works fantastic for our Comcast internet service as well as Cox internet service. Uh, if you want to provision yourself to go up to 2000 megabits, this one will handle it. But I got the one for one gigabit, which is the CM1100, but it's not even available right now. So if you want to future proof yourself, you might, might as well pay about $25 more and get this one. Um, for $175. This one will mm -hmm. future-proof you to 2 gigabits and that's really, really good. Or you can, go, you can get this one. This is a CM1000, um, which is a little bit older model than I have, but I don't recommend it because for $25 more, you can future-proof yourself to 2 gigabits. So that's why I recommend yeah. the CM1200. Um, now, if you want to go Motorola, Motorola is fine too. Motorola is actually more common because people like it better just because it's, it's been a more trusted name for cable modem for a longer time. 
This one is uh, MB8600 and it's great for gigabit internet on Comcast as well as Cox Gigablast service works fine. This one is only 1 gigabit though versus the CM1200 which is feature proof to 2 gigabyte. But this one's a little bit cheaper. So you guys, you guys can pick your pick. All these modems, these two modems that I recommend are high quality right now. So these are good stuff. They're high quality period, not just right now. They're high quality because Comcast might not even give you these high quality modems. And if they give you older modems or modems that are not high quality, that means you're gonna have to deal with restarts more often or overheating and mm. breakdown over time. So high quality modem goes a long way. Just like routers, you know, routers are the same. Like they do the same functionality, right? But you notice if you buy cheap routers, the range might be not so good. You have to restart it every so often or sometimes you just get drop connections. It's just, Mm -hmm. and they overheat and they don't work well when it's hot and there's a lot of problems so you want a good quality one so I only recommend good quality products here now there's another dilemma uh, just because we want, we're into the buying or renting modem you might want to consider even buying one that's a router too because then that way you have one less device because normally you have a cable modem and a router right because mm -hmm. the cable modem pulls in a signal from your cable provider and then it gives you one ethernet port that you can connect to a computer or a laptop or whatever but if you want to share that or you want that to be a wi-fi signal then you need to go to a router the router then divides up the, the same signals to multiple computers <laughs> Now, you, that's two devices, which I actually use and prefer to have two separate devices because you get one modem that's really good as a modem, you get one router that's really good as a router. That's my preference. But for people that want to combine things together, they can go with this one. This is a Netgear CM... Uh, actually, I don't... Yeah, they call it the C. Yeah, the C7800. You can go for this one if you want to, to simplify things, but I highly don't recommend it because it's much more flexible to have a cable modem and a router separately just because router technology changes much more frequently than cable modem and cable mm -hmm. modems usually last a very long time whereas routers uh, they tend to not last as long because yeah just in my experience they don't last as long and also because technology changes on routers more right and um, that's why it's good to have them separate because I've never really had a bad cable modem I've had like this really old um, Motorola SB6183 I think this one is like you, you know what side story I, yeah before AT&T I used to be a Comcast yeah. customer I have cable cable TV and cable uh, internet right yeah but then I think that yeah you're right because they use model as yeah. the cable modems yep. and I have one really bad experience and that's mm -hmm. why it caused me to switch is that they keep sending me the same Motor roller cable modem, yeah. you know, the one they provide. Yeah. All three of them are bad when they send it to me. Yeah, because it's old stuff. It, it, they, they don't like, test it. I was like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> you can't miss the, the fur ones do bad. It's like, you know what? Forget this. That's why I switched. Because back then, I don't really need that much of like a uh, um, bandwidth to do with just yep. whatever I just browse internet. So anything works. Yep. So we'll go back to DSL. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But that's this is 10 years ago. Yes. I was waiting for a fiber optic. It never came. Well, it started to come around, but it's because of the... No. They have everywhere else in my city except my area because where I live is actually in between two different cities. So I'm mm -hmm. at the edge of the city. That's why I'm the furthest away. I have the weakest link. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> not everyone has the benefit of using good internet service at their own home because of the limitation of where they live. That is unfortunately true. Um, and actually, let me bring up a comment really quick from Nettie. I, N N um, I think you might be able to help Nettie out with this question. She hmm. says, is it not true when they, like AT&T, because you have experience with AT&T, Jeremy, mm -hmm. say it's included? Rent. Is it a rental, uh, a hidden charge in your monthly service? Do you know that, Jeremy? Uh, it's not quite hidden. It, when it said included, it basically is included in the charge already. But depends on what kind of deal. I mean, they have different bundle deals, right? Some basically straight up they tell you that you know you have to rent your equipment separately. Some basically says that it's included, but it's actually it's kind of inside already. So either way, internally they will charge your modem or any external ex uh, equipment on the side. It's not included with the service. 
Yeah, or, or, or if they say it's part of the promotion, then yes, they wrap it in there. But just remember, when the promotion ends, they will charge you separately yeah. as a line item for that modem, whether it's $15 or $20. I'm with Comcast, so I don't know uh, the price for the at t modem. Xfinity is the same thing. I talked to Xfinity yeah. today. I'm trying to get a new service. You mean Xfinity? And Xfinity. Yeah. Why am I keep saying Xfinity? Xfinity. They're going to charge me $15 per month for a cable modem. Yep. That's why I was asking David, should I went or should I buy? And that's where this video comes alive. Yes, and I said to Jeremy, we're like, why? No, don't rent. Buy, 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 buy. Like, I've never rented a modem in 10 years. I rented the modem in, in like college when I didn't know better. But after that, I realized it's $15 per month. I just need to pay for like 10 months and then now I own a modem. Plus, I, have I know, a, I'm looking at the yeah. cable modem prices that, yeah. oh, like 100 bucks. Yeah. So if I sign them like a two year contract, yes. let's say it just stayed two years, yeah. I could buy two of those modems. Yeah, and you don't need to. You just buy once and then you already made up your cost in 10 months. And then after a second year, you then, made more money. Well, yeah, save money. For my, for my previous AT and T DSL, I mean, with yeah. them for like seven years. So guess how much money I put in just for paying for the stupid modem? Yeah, that's fifteen times uh, twelve times seven. You want me to calculate that for you? No, uh, it hurts. It's gonna hurt. Don't say it. <laughs> okay. Don't say it. I won't say it. But so I'm curious. Is, when thing is actually gonna cost you money if you're gonna have a long term with them? I have someone on Facebook asking saying yes. that's totally a rental. <laughs> twelve. Times seven, Jeremy. Don't do it. <laughs> look, I'm not gonna say it, but you can look in the screen if you want to know how much Jeremy paid to rent a Too modem. Too late. I've seen it for seven years. <laughs> oh my gosh! Remember when you said I was high for saying how much uh, uh, for twelve hundred dollar cable modem? Well, you pretty much spent twelve hundred dollars for your cable modem or your inter your modem, Jeremy. <sighs> Unfortunately, I mean that's how that's how rent works, right? It, it's you, it's like renting a house. It's like renting a car. Also, renting a car. Yeah, it, well, everything. When, when I mean lease, yeah. there's no one. When, when right. it's different. Right, right. Where, where in the case where it's a car, it kind of makes sense because if you want the latest technology always. Well, car makes sense. New. If you yeah, have your new, own business, if you lease a car, right. you can actually deduct tax uh, yes. constantly. Yes. While you're buying a car, it depreciates. Yep. So that's why leasing a car is good. That's mm -hmm. a totally different story. Yeah. We can't really put that modem onto a taxi and say, hey, should, I got this. You could. You could technically but write off no a business. Point. What, no. take what, 50 cents off? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's not, it's not worth it. Plus, with a car, you want the latest, greatest car every two years if you keep leasing, right? With the yeah, cable some of those modem, cars depends if you buy those European cars, yeah. the maintenance costs you more. Yes, yes. Yeah. Whereas a cable modem, not only do you get an older one, but you get one, when you rent, you get an older modem and you get one that's more likely to break down because they're lower quality. <laughs> So it's like the mm -hmm. opposite of a car when you lease, right? So definitely not a good deal to rent. Always a better deal to buy and it'll last you longer. And even after you've, you've used a modem for like three years, you technically can sell it because not everyone's gonna need the fastest modem. I sold my old modem for like half the cost. So, that, so here's my yeah. question. The, the modem that they provide to you, they went it to you, to yes. charge you. Yeah. If let's say if I'm getting a gigabit, gigabit service, right? Yes. Can it really maximize those speed, or is it just barely doing it? Oh no! Well, if you if you rent a modem, it would be yes, they will be able to get to that speed. If okay. if you, yeah, they will give you one that does. Now I've had experience with better modem, worse modems that are refurbished or they don't work as well, or they're bad brands that technically might burst at the good speed but slow down <laughs> over time because you, you think of it it's just like cheap products right like a cheap router for example that's probably easier to relate or a cheap laptop right it does what it says but if you push it it's not going to work as well it's going to overheat and it's it's just it'll restart it'll shut down it's stuff like that that yes it will achieve what you, they promise it to but you'll have problems because there's just the lower end stuff and they're not the most modern technology, although they reach the bare minimum to provide the service that you're paying for. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> so it does, it does provide the speed that you want, but it's not as reliable and it's not as, yes, it's not as reliable as buying a better brand. Actually, I think ultimately one of the things, you don't want to deal with the customer service. No. When you are winning with their gears. Yes. Uh, so just today, Okay, dealing with their customer service is being 
a hell of a trip for me. Yes, customer service. I've been on the phone the whole afternoon with them. The first phone call, I called them, and I was so. What this is what happened? Backstories. I upgraded my service last month. Mm -hmm. Right, doing fine mm -hmm. until last night. Mm -hmm. The whole thing just slowed down. Like, what's going on? Like, it, I thought that it'd be just the maintainer, whatever. Yeah. Would fix it this morning. Right. It didn't. I checked the speed down at and say, like, why is it go back to my old speed? Yeah. <laughs> slow. I mean, four times slower. So I call, and that lady over the phone can't do much. Say, like, no, I don't know. Basically, all they're saying, I don't see you have that service. I don't see you have that new service. What? It's not on your profile. It's nothing. You still have the 24 mega megabit. It's like, what? I upgraded it last month. Yeah. I have all the cone record with the technician coming in, <laughs> install a new modem for me, new line. Yes. And I have the speed test screenshot right here. Yeah. I said, well, I can't do nothing about it. It's not showing the record. It's not showing the record. I was being weird already because I have not received any information from right. AT&T that I have upgrade or invoice one now. Right. So, What's going on? Yes. So they said they would get back to me in 24, 40 hours. Good thing they came back. Uh -huh. If in an hour, I think this time is someone who is in U.S. Because that lady, I guarantee you, that's not working in U.S. Uh -huh. <laughs> they outsourced it like oh, God yeah. knows where. <laughs> yes. All right. So they just whipped the um, manuscript. Know, the Bible, just manuscript, whatever. So I have someone I know that he's working in, in state. So yeah. he starts helping me out. And at first, he said, oh, you know what? I think they unpack your service. Oh, why? I don't know. Let me find out. So so I figured, oh, it didn't pack it. It's probably a mistake. Mm -hmm. And then they called me later, I think half an hour later, and told me that, oh, you know what happened? I finally want out what happened. Guess what happened? This is the most ridiculous excuse I have ever heard. Oh, no. So last time, I called in because I purchased a Samsung tablet. Well, yeah. actually, it's not purchased. It's given. Oh, I wow. bought my phone way back okay. with AT&T, mm -hmm. right? And then during that deal, they kind of give me a free tablet. Well, actually, we, at 99 cents, I got a free tablet. And then they give me a SIM card for the tablet, which is I could bring it out for like data, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like four years ago. Mm. Like four years ago? Yeah. I don't even have the tablet anymore. <laughs> Somehow they keep that data line and keep charging me. I didn't know what? about it. because It was on another... Uh, but that was, that's okay because that's supposed to have a two-year contract. So basically, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, no. So three years. So I I missed one year. Uh, they charged me one year. I didn't know about it. It's on yeah. another card. And then, but uh, you haven't well, used it in like no. a long time. So you've been paying for nothing. Yeah. So I call and cancel it at the same time. Yeah. I ask. So the call for that reason is I want to cancel my data card for that stupid thing that you should not charge me anymore right. because I don't have it anymore. Separate from your internet so, service. Right. And then at the same time, I'm asking that lady, hey, do you guys have any special deal that I want to upgrade my AT&T U-verse um, internet? Mm -hmm. I need a faster one. Mm -hmm. And then she did a searching here and there and told me, oh, yeah, we have something that four times faster you do. Oh, well, you know what? Even though it's not gigabyte, I'll take it, mm -hmm. right? Because we're not all so slow. Yeah. I told you about that. <laughs> yes. So so that was the backstory, right? Yeah. So that's what happened. Mm -hmm. This guy told me the reason why I have that that service never exists because they never offered that to the customers, mm -hmm. right? So they have the service, they don't offer it, but I have the service. People, the technician come in and right. install it. I have right. screenshot, all that, it was yes. fast, right? Right. They said that we never had that service, that was exist, but I have it. So what they're telling me is that the reason that I have the service because that were sent is trying to um, help me stay with the wireless plan uh -huh. so they give me a service to compensate. Okay, so they, they just cooked up a service that's not a, a public plan to give mm -hmm. you a special plan. Which I say, well, hold on, hold on. I call in first thing first to cancel yeah. my data. Yeah. And your representative cancel it for me first. Okay. okay. Before I ask for internet upgrade. Right. So, so why that? would that, yeah. yeah, why would that deal that she want to give me this internet deal so that I could keep, which she already canceled? Yeah. Right. That doesn't make sense. Right. Right? Right. So they come up with some BS telling me that it's my fault because I cut my line so I don't have the service anymore. What? Okay, okay. So they're saying that because you canceled the data plan for that, that, that tablet, now you mm -hmm. can't have the special internet, internet service. Yeah. But that's bullshit. I'm sorry. That's bull crap. <laughs> because, because you already canceled that internet data plan. For that Before tablet. I asked for the internet upgrade. Right, right. Oh man, that's so messed up. Right? Yes. 
so so now basically you don't have fast internet. They took it away, and then you can't even get it because they don't even no. offer that plan. Mm -hmm. What? I that. Yeah, that's one reason why if you want high performance internet, just stay away from AT and T. Get Comcast if you're in the area that has Comcast. Get Cox if you're in the area that has Cox internet. But, I mean, if you have to geez. bullcrap and give some lies to yeah. tell people I you can get that deal, find a better one. This is a stupid one. I mean, okay. To be honest, I've heard my coworkers at work complain about Comcast and Cox as well because oh, I, not, none of them are. Hundred percent perfect or good? No, Ooh. none of them are good because I think what is what it is is that when you deal with low tier service, and it's not that it's low quality service, but you deal with just people, like a lot of people, and that includes mm -hmm. people that do well in life, people that are middle class, and also low class people because everyone uses internet, right? Then you mm -hmm. have to deal with people that is trying to be shady, trying to take money away, n not paying their bills, and then you have to try to hook them in with contracts, and at the end you have to pay a lot more because there's and they're breaking contract and whatnot. So it's a, it's, mm -hmm. it's a scam almost to provide internet service and build them for it. That's really what it is. And it's just it's just a really shady, dirty way to do business. But that's just the way it happens. Because but then if you, so I was pissed this morning. Yes. I don't know how you use that word. So if you do a search on Google yeah. and say, how bad is AT&T, how bad yeah. is Comcast, how bad is all that, you'll find the most comments and even graphics on AT and T. Yeah. Well, AT and T is really not not known for their internet. And number one, they're using DSL still, right? So it's it's not even the the modern standard. Uh, e cable modem is like the best standard you can do right now for the range and flexibility because technically cable modem isn't supposed to be gigabit speed. We're lucky because over time the development of Doxis three point one allow bunches of bunches of uh, bands to get bonded together to provide mm. you a gigabit. So right now we have cable modem that provides really high speed, which originally like years ago we thought you needed fiber optics to get to the speed. So cable modem right now is pretty much at the peak of their technology and they keep growing too. They're getting to two gigabits right now with cable modem and you don't need fiber. And the cool thing about cable is that you can go far distance. You can get to places that a lot of places don't have service. So mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's, quite, it's the way to go. If you want good quality internet at high speed, that's the way to go. Now AT&T, they're still using DSL. So I mean, they're subpar by far. Well, they have fiber optic, just oh, don't they know do. how good they are. They ah, do. yes. But only in small amount of areas. Yeah, so Not again, my areas. That's, that's the limitation, right? Like cable modem is more broadly out there because everyone has cable TV and cable TV is the same coax cable then now you can deliver ethernet signal internet signal so that's why cable modem is dominating because all the ground all the framework is already designed and even though you have the older coax coax hasn't really changed in like <clears throat> very 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 long time whereas DSL lines have to be updated to like ISDN lines and or from ISDN lines and fiber optic obviously has to be put in because there are no fiber optic lines previously so cable modem is like the most versatile way to get the internet, fast internet to people's houses. So if you have a choice between like AT&T or a cable internet provider, go with cable. No question about that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. So the only dilemma is I have to get the TV service too. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of on your own thing because everyone has their different needs. Like if you technically, I don't know why pe okay, so this is my standard. I don't need TV. I don't need phone. Oh, I don't watch TV. Right. I, I do it for my parents. Right. You know, for this type of hours, you need some entertainment. So I like, I have no choice. I have to give it to them. <laughs> yes, they, they think don't do streaming. They think they need TV, but I was able to get my parents off TV and my parents are also Asian like you and they need the Asian news channel, right? But we were able to use OTA over the air antenna to pick up the signal locally and it's in 4k too and we have i know you're looking for the uh, cantonese channels but we have the vietnamese channel where we're at and we get like three or four different vietnamese channel oh over the air at 4k resolution totally free by buying an hd antenna then if they want to watch movies that's what we have netflix for so then that's 
free free over the air. Netflix is like ten bucks a month. You yeah, I, I kind of kind of trained them on Netflix, so they've been watching a lot of yeah. those Korea drama. You know how have you realized that there are a lot of Korea dramas of into course. Netflix? Like what's going on? Because <laughs> Korean dramas is great for binge watching, and people get into it. And yeah, they have Korean drama on anything, whether you're interested in cars, cooking, even business, or be even fighting. Any genre, they can make a Korean drama. There's there's one about baking. That's true. Yeah, gambling, medicine, gaming, anything they can make a Korean drama about. Cause have you seen that one that uh, about zombies? Yes, yes, yes. There's a lot about oh, zombies. Kingdom. That one's pretty good. Yeah, Kingdom. Kingdom is scary. I, uh, my coworker watched it. She recommended me to it watch it. It wasn't that scary. I don't. Ah, uh, you know I'm weak. I, I don't watch. I don't watch anything that's remotely scary because I, I I have a bad. I don't know what it is. I I know the Vietnamese word, but I can't say it in English. But like, to, literal translation is my soul is weak, and I get scared very easily. So like when I when I watch a, a scary movie, I will think about it. Every day and night, and I can't, I can't oh, go yeah. to the bathroom at night without <laughs> looking over my back and just being scared every single second, or taking a shower and having to keep my eyes open while I'm shampooing my hair because I'm afraid I'm gonna get like surprised when I open my eyes after I close them, you know? And constantly looking over my shoulder. All right, let me ask you this. Yes, I get Do you ever go to Disneyland? Yes. If you go, do. You... The small world, yes. those tunnels. Yes. Are you okay with those? Small world is fine, but the haunted mansion is actually scary. Haunted mansion. What about um? What's that other one? Pirate of far. the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean wasn't too bad. So, so haunted house. Your, haunted house, nothing, man. The hologram. They're so thick. okay, haunted house. It's so thick. Haunted house is not bad. It's not very farm, and those Halloween. Um, oh, those Halloween ones is they're scary. Is bad. Yeah, they so, they tend tend to up scary. So. Yeah, so Disneyland one, no, I would take it back. Disneyland one wasn't bad. I would say Disneyland the one I'm scared of is like Space Mountain, but that's the ride, not the ghost. Space Mountain is good. It's yeah, fun. but when I was small, I, I was really scared. Partially the reason why is because I did not expect it to be a roller coaster. Because when I was small, oh yeah, when you first you didn't know, like no. people kind of fool you. Like, Let's go on this ride. This is fun. Yes. Space Mountain. Well, Space Mountain, the term doesn't really indicate it is a roller coaster or not, no. and also is you can't see it outside, right? No. But the normal roller coaster is like, oh, yeah. I'm not going for that loop. I'm not, right. no, 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 right? But exactly. when you go inside, like, what is this? You would think it's the, one of those normal rides that you know yes. you, you see stuff. In it's fact, not. <laughs> I thought I, you know, I had I thought it was the Star Wars ride. You know the Star Wars ride, right? Yeah. I thought it was that, and so I went on it, and it freaked me out because like I totally didn't expect a roller coaster ride, and yeah, it was a it was a very bad time because back this is this is when I was like maybe ten or twelve years old. Actually, I thought yeah. it would be like um, the Back to the Future ride. You know, you sit inside a car, oh, it doesn't yeah. move, but right. the screen moves a little bit. Yeah, how far is those? Those are fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are bad. <laughs> Yep, so we're quite off topic now and yeah. talking about like Netflix, right? So you don't need TV on your 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 plan if you can get your parents to adapt to but over the, the air. But the TV is not too expensive. Yeah. It's just I don't like the fact that you have to buy those TV box. They charge that's, that's separate, they like ten you. bucks. And you can't get away from it. You have to rent their box. And actually, I've went as far as saying monthly. Yes. Yes. Okay, so here's the thing about with um, Comcast. I even told them that I just want internet. I don't use TV. Don't give me TV. And this is what they say. Oh, we can't give you a special deal unless you get TV. But if you just bundle in TV and you don't use the TV, it's going to be cheaper than just getting internet. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm not going to use TV. So don't even send me the box. Just put me on that plan because it's cheaper, but you know how they get me? If I get TV, I have to pay TV tax. Even though I don't plan to use it, and they don't talk about tax when they're quoting me. <sighs> and then, there's always problems, because I didn't get the, the, the cable modem box. When it's time to cancel the service, they ask for the cable modem box back. Mm -hmm. And then there's also times when I get charged for a cable modem box, even though I declined it initially, because they said, oh, everyone that has a service has to have a box. You can't really buy your own box, so you must have. You a know box. what's a funny thing about it? Like, oh. So I 
they 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 gave me direct TV. Yeah. They kind of forced me to upgrade like yes. back then. Right. We're still with AT&T because right, they right. bought direct TV, right? So I have the direct TV dish outside. So I talked to the representative from AT&T this morning say, okay, what if I cancel everything? Do I have to send you everything back? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the model and everything. But yes. um, what about the dish? I, I mean, you guys install it. I didn't install it. I mean, you're going to take it off? Say, oh, no, we don't need the dish back. You can just throw it away. Say, oh. huh? I was like, what? <laughs> you asked for a little tiny modem, which is outdated, but the dish, you don't want it back. So It's probably more you, work for them to come and climb and get it for you. Probably to calculate yeah. uh, the budget and yeah, stuff. And plus, but plus that was kind dish, of shocking. It's like, what? Yeah, because technically a dish, like you, they'll get old and they'll get deteriorated, right? Because it's out in the sun and weather for a long time. Probably. Yeah, probably. and they can't really sell it to anyone else anyway. Plus, the fact that it's there in front of your house is marketing for them, free marketing. Um, I'm taking it off. No, it's not. It's actually inside house. It's back of my house, so no one is can it see it. But it does say AT&T, right? It says Direct TV. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's marketing for them still. You know what? I want to put Pixel Stabber on the dish, Rod. <laughs> like, Pixel oh. Stabbers. There you go. Yes. Yeah. So definitely going back to the point of rent or buy modem, what's your answer? Buy. Yes, buy. I'm not, it's a fact that, okay, so if they do it nicely including it, it's fine. Yeah. It's just that fact that you asked me to pay monthly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I'm paying monthly for a service already. Yeah. But you want to squeeze every single blood out of my wallet. Yeah. So they can make a little bit more, which is totally worthless to me. I just feel that it's not about a service. It's not about, it's just that I feel like you're cheating me and that's not a good feeling. Yeah. And Rather I have the money or not, I just not happy paying you. Period. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's 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 reasonable. Plus, remember all the the disadvantage of renting that we talked about. They're giving you a refurbished modem. They're not the latest modem, and they're not a good brand. Typically, the brands that give you overheat and just simply barely meet the minimum requirements to run at the speed that you're you paid at. Plus, over time, when newer cable technology comes out. If you have a new one, it's actually going to squeeze out more performance from your service provider than the one they gave you. So you can update your modem. You can't just say, hey, the modem I'm renting, uh, can you update me to the newest one? Heck no. They're going to say the modem that you're renting is providing the service that you're paying for, period. But if mm -hmm. you are buying your own modem, the newer modem technology can squeeze more bandwidth out of your internet service. Even though you don't change your tier, yes. Yeah, and then obviously you can troubleshoot much better. If there's something wrong with your modem, you can go find a different one. You don't have to worry about paying the, the fee and you don't have to worry about returning the modem. So I think it's a convenience feature for people that don't want to deal with it, but it's actually inconvenient if you know enough to avoid it. It's just, it's just not worth it to really deal and with it. And on top of that, they kind of mess with me. Like, I don't care about money. This is one thing they didn't know. I just care about the integrity. You don't have it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not going to buy in your service. I'm not going to do business with you. I'm going to be friend with you, period. Yeah. Don't mess with Jeremy. But yeah, like this, 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 <laughs> this one example right here. Okay, so right here, you are paying a little bit more. Oh, crap. The last one sold out. No. What? Yes, it sold out. Why would it? it was 175. Okay, no, no, oh. I clicked on the wrong one. No, 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 I'm sorry. Oh. I clicked on the wrong Woo. one. It's here. But it is sold yeah, out. Yeah. It is sold out. That's why it clicked me to the next one. While oh, we're doing man. the stream, someone just bought it for $175. Now there's, there's no I more. Have, I should have bought it before we do the stream. I think someone else probably buy it while I was probably you about it. You should have bought it. <laughs> it. Now, now it's price gouged up to $225. It was $175. Oh, no. uh, well, whoever got it on the stream, at least thumbs up the stream, like the stream or something, support us. Because Jeremy's was going to buy it, but now it's gone. Um, yeah, and this is future-proofing yourself too. Jeremy, wait, don't worry. I want to keep an eye on it, and when there's a good deal, I'll let you know. I'll buy it for you so that you don't miss out on the deal. But yeah, this is like future-proofing yourself, right? Even though you won't get one gigabit Ethernet rental, you could just get your two gigabyte modem here, and this will squeeze more performance out of your internet service than what you're paying for. Because here's one catch about Comcast and Cox, which a lot of people don't realize, is that the, this is a good thing they do, is that they will provision you for more speed than you're paying for. Mm. Yes, 
So technically, when you're asking for gigabit, you're going to get more than gigabit. And your download speed, even though they say you're going to get 35 megabits that upload, I end up getting close to 50 megabits upload. Yes. Wow. Yes. And that's because I have a better modem than they prescribe. And my better modem can suck more performance out of it. So there is another good reason why you want to buy a modem yes. rather than rent a modem. Yes. Newer technology. You you can stick, you okay. can uh, suck out more performance, and especially right, if you don't buy all the modem yet. Let me buy mine first, then you guys go buy yours. Okay, so it's, the next one come out is mine. Yeah, actually, if you wanted to right now, but I don't recommend it because I still I use Netgear. Obviously, this is the one I have, and I I've had this one for several years now, and it's been great for me. This is even older than the one that we have on the screen. You see, this one is the CM. This is a DOS 3.12, but it's the CM1100, uh, older technology here, but still mm -hmm. works. The one that I recommend is the 1200, which is going to be at the 2 megabit, 2 gigabit. So that you have some, the 2 gigabit one is that you have some future proofing because eventually okay. you might want to upgrade. Also, just because it's 2 gigabit, you will squeeze more performance out of the service. Mm. But if you want to save money, if you want to save money, this one is in stock, one fifty nine ninety nine. This is only one gigabit, um, and this is not future proofing. But still, if you need one right now, it says six gigabits max speed, though, right? Oh, it does. How is that true? Hang on, let me read this. It still docks as three point one. Um, why does it say gig six gigabit max? Speed? Speed. Yes, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> no, 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 no. So it's still one gigabit. So I don't know why it's a six gigabit mass speed, man. That's just marketing BS. Why does it say six gigabit mass speed? Because, oh, here it is. Here it is. So maximum internet download speed, actual speeds are lower. What the heck? Recommended by Comcast <laughs> Internet for this tier. Okay, so I guess. It is designed for 6 gigabit. Okay. So, so this one's good then. That is good. Yes. Yes. Um, I would have to do uh, more. People don't buy, keep buying this. Let me buy my first and then you buy yours. Okay, so I'm, I'm streaming when I can't buy it. So <laughs> wait for me. This one is actually good. I would do a little bit more research before we just jump on it. Uh -huh. Let's just actually, let's do the research right now because we're online, right? Yeah. So. Some people say there's four Ethernet ports on this modem. That's actually That's good. That would be really cool because if you have four Ethernet ports and say you 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 have a you you have like a couple computers at the site at the location where your cable modem comes in, then you don't need a wireless router with so many ports because it already the modem already has several Ethernet ports. Oh, no router. <laughs> you already have the router, right? But this is cool for people that have. Wait, does this one has Wi-Fi built in? No, or no, no. So. But, then I need my router to do the Wi-Fi. Yeah, but th this doesn't make sense, okay? Because right here, I see this one has only one Ethernet port. Right here, there's one Ethernet port. One. I don't see four. Maybe it's a different model? How? It, it could Because be. if you scroll down, they have different models, right? Look, look. Yeah, and then in the front, they look all the same. But Ethernet port, there's only one in all of them. There's oh. none of them that has four. Wait, that's only a questions though. So that might not apply to this model. This okay. is asking is four. Then we did again. We might okay. miss something. Do all four Ethernet Do ports on this modem output the same amount of bandwidth, or are there only certain ones? The reason for four ports on this modem requires some explanation. It is important to understand the 8600 does not do routing. The 8600 is a modem only. A router can be connected to any of the any of the gigabit port. The link between the router and the modem is then capable of using the full rate of the gigabit service Comcast currently provides with the new DOCSIS 3.1 service. In the future, Comcast and other cable services are expected to offer faster than one gigabit. When those uh -huh. faster services are offered, the additional ports on the 8600 will be needed. Ports 1 and 2 can be bounded to allow up to 2 gigabyte, gigabits per second to deliver by the modem. The other two ports are then allowed to 
do additional bonding for speeds over 2 gigabits per second. Okay, so this makes sense because it's called ag aggregated Ethernet ports. Mm -hmm. Right, because you know, like basically, LAN ports are one gigabit max. So if your service right. is two gigabyte, then you have to aggregate two of them together to provide the the bandwidth from the modem to your router, and then people on your router can use the the bandwidth. But if say right. you you get two gigabit Ethernet service, but the line between your modem to your router is only one gigabit, then you're bottleneck, right? So this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now this all goes back to say, where are the ports, like? There, this is the guy selling it, right? The Metro uh, MTRLLCC, whatever, the guy selling it. He says, but it doesn't make sense because this guy is selling it, yes, but the picture shows me only one Ethernet port. I don't see any other ports. And I look down here to the specs, like you said, because there's... Look at other people's picture. Look at, look at other people's okay, like, wheel, yes. modem pictures. Okay, that's true. You know some of those. Yes, I know what you're talking about. So here's the modem. Oh. This guy's got download speeds, upload speeds. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is crazy good, right? Upload 41, yes. 900. Look at that. I need that numbers, man. Come technically, on. technically, I get over 1,000 megabits per second with my... my... It's in Sacramento, though. Uh, yeah, well, we don't know. Yeah, so, okay, so then... Let, let me see those pictures. I want to see a picture where it showed me four LAN ports. Where, yeah. where are the four LAN ports, man? Because that doesn't make sense why they're telling Just me... Just try to Google on this model outside yes. and see if there's enough oh, pictures. Oh, yes. Because they might nip it. Yeah, you're good, good point. This is curious now. Yeah, I'm curious. This I'm is... very curious. So, let me see. Because this, if this is true, this is a better modem than the Netgear. Because this goes up to 6 gigabytes. So, let's see. And cheaper. Yes, it's cheaper. Uh, LAN ports. Or... Ethernet port. Ethernet port. How many Ethernet ports does it have? It does have four. Let's look at the image. I see one. Oh, oh you peel out that. You peel that up. That's why. What? There's four. Okay, I'm getting this. <laughs> this is the modem to get, guys. What? Did you see that? You peel this off. And that was get, I kind of guessed it. I kind of guessed that, but I wasn't sure. That, that's why I didn't say anything. So like they probably cover it up. That's what I feel like. Because you, you don't need it right now. Yeah, because it's gonna confuse people. Because if you don't plug it into the right port, it won't mm -hmm. work. If you have only so, one. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm getting this. Yeah, <laughs> this is the one to get. Yeah, so those ports are not for connecting to multiple computers. You, they are for aggregating signal to your router. That's really cool. Okay, this is the modem yeah. to get. This is the modem to get. MB AG six hundred. Yes. By yes. Motor Roller. Yeah, and then you guys. Don't buy it yet. You you guys should <laughs> always go on Google and always search for like if you're using Comcast, right? Search for Comcast compatible modems. Oh, is it going to be compatible with um, Xfinity and yes. Comcast? Yes. Same thing. Comcast is Xfinity. I don't know. You keep saying Comcast, so it's kind of confused, dude. Yeah, you know, Comcast is Xfinity. So, okay, okay. So, 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 Good to know that. Right, so it's very confusing, but Comcast changed their name to Xfinity to sound cooler. Simple as that. But I think it caused more confusion. I still like Comcast better. Comcast. No. Well, anyway. Okay, so. Xfinity is like. Eh. This is the Xfinity website, right? And you can go to Cox website for the same thing. And then you click on this. This is a list of approved cable modem. So you go to the list. Uh, where's their list? What? I want to see like a list of modem. This is lame. How about my device info? But this is for... Nope. No, I want to see a list. Okay, fine. Don't even use Comcast list. Just go for a, like a, another aftermarket devices. How about this? Nope. Okay, fine. This is then we're gonna go to some third party. We're gonna go here. Approved modem. Okay, I trust this website because I've been here before. Approvedmodems.com, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. then they, they can search by vendors, right? And they've done tests to see which modem is compatible with Comcast. So here. Comcast. Motorola, Motorola. Right. 
But you want to be sure, you're looking at the 8600B, right? 8600, right there, right there. Where? You missed it. Down there. Model roller 8600. There. Skip coin yeah. down. So there's no link to it, only because they didn't link to the Amazon listing. But, or the, to the review page. What's 2 times 2? Two times two is the um, it's the Doxus channel. Oh, okay. So Doxus okay, channels. so Doxus is for gigabit, right? So if you if you bond two gigabit, this this should be able to go up to two gigabyte. Although they, they right here they say the top speed is one gigabit. So this is not entirely accurate either, because we know it can get up to but six as gigabit. The, at least we know it's compatible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't have Wi-Fi and it doesn't have voice. So yeah, I know it's compatible. So this is this is a good. Oh, wait, order. it does have Wi-Fi. No, it doesn't. It's X. Oh, it doesn't. No, sorry. Yeah. So let's see the one one. No, it's not okay. Yeah, but this is a good one because it's approved by Comcast from this website, ApprovedModems.com. Comcast, Comcast won't actually give you a list of approved modem because guess what? Because they want you to buy theirs. Oh, yeah. Rent theirs. They want you to rent theirs. So they're gonna say rent our modem because our modems are approved. <laughs> They won't just say these are approved modem because obviously then people will buy their own. But that's why websites like approved modems exist because they will help you find the right modem. And this is so cool, man. This thing, you can peel off the label. I can't believe this. This is so cool. You can freaking peel off the label and get four Ethernet ports. So you can directly bond two Ethernet ports to get two gigabit. And then you can buy more ports to get uh, up to four gigabit. Dang it, now I want this. I think, no wait, hang on. I think my modem can handle, yes, mine does. So I actually, I have the CM110 or 1, 1, 1100, right? CM1100. Yeah, yes, but did you read this line here? It's multi gigabit multi speed. speed. So it can do up to Ooh. two gigabits, yes. So you don't have to upgrade your modem anytime soon. Yes. I Which don't. Good. And yes. I feel like if I pay something like this is what? How much is this one? 150? One fifty nine, I think. One fifty nine. Yeah. It's a whole year. Yeah. Basically, I use if I buy this and using the service, yeah. good. I at least use it like three, four years yeah. minimum. Yeah. I mean. So that's my that's save me another a couple hundred bucks yeah. there. You save fifteen hundred, a uh, hundred fifty per month, uh, per year, because it's fifteen dollars per month for a year. Yeah. It's actually a uh, hundred and eighty. A year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus tax. I think they charge a tax on the rental too. See, I can use those money and buy you a good dinner. You don't need to buy me dinner. We just stream and play yeah, games and together. Won't. Yeah. But you just, you just don't want to go our way now. I can't. That's all. Yes. But check this out. <laughs> check this out. My mo my cable modem. I'm so happy to see this. I only have two though. It only has two, but two is enough. Because two is future proofing me up to two gigabit. And I bought this over over two years ago. Oh, oh probably around two years ago. So I'm glad that at least I'm feature proof to two gigabit. But now you guys don't have to be feature proof to two gigabit. Two gigabit, you can be future proof. Like a future proof. future proof. Wait, to six this. gigabyte, <laughs> six gigabit per second. Wow. And the Motorola is it's uh, reputable. Oh so, yeah, uh, Motorola I'm, is more reputable than that year, um, because Motorola has been making really high end cable modem for a very long time. You see this modem. I bought back in the days of like the 700 megabit time period. And guess what brand it is, right? Motorola. Yeah, Motorola. And even before this, I had several Motorola modem and they've always been I have good. a long history of that. My first cell, mm -hmm. cell phone is Motorola. Really? I thought it would be Nokia. No, Nokia is after that. The first one is the flip phone. So you never started with the, the Nokia candy bar. You, you started with no, like a, a Razer. All the world flip. Not Razer, the old, old big flip phone. <laughs> I don't even remember. Nope, older. This one. Nope. Yes, that one. Oh, jeez, Jeremy. Jeez. <laughs> that's disgusting. Well, I'm back in the day, right? Dude, that saved life, man. You know, okay, so back then. Yeah. When I do go to San Francisco and party a lot, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> young, young Jeremy, yeah. single. So my friend, reckless. my friend has that really big one. You know what I'm talking about? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, I know those huge also one. Motorola yeah. With, that, with antenna yeah. coming out, I have that. Uh, let's say if, okay, I don't know if my mom or my wife hear this, but if you get in a fight, 
that cell phone become a weapon. Oh, wow. Now that they, none of your cell phone can hit people and not break. Back, back in the day, that look here. Boom. Uh, uh, uh. Motorola, right? They don't build as it used to be, man. Seriously. Oh, yeah. I mean, back in the days, it, it wasn't about maximizing. I, I did my, well, this, I yeah. could be wrong. But back in the day when they build product, yep. it's built to last. Yes. All the company who build is built to last. Oh, yeah. Even and dishwasher, this one thing microwave, why, like, appliances. Like Apple. Yeah. Apple build for you to upgrade to the next product. No, I think I, I don't agree with that. I think Apple products are really designed well and they stand the test of time. That's why they have such good resale value because I have people that are still... Can't drop them. Don't drop them. <laughs> yes, but I still have people that are still using the iPhone 6, iPhone 7 and it still works fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about a qual not, not the usability. It's there. I mean, if anything that if you take care of them well, yeah. right, you could use it for a long time. Yeah. But how doable are yes, they? Yes, You know, human doable. being are careless. Yeah. We drop things. Yeah. How can you imagine how many people drop their iPhone? Oh yeah. Per day. That's a lot. Yeah. How many people break their phone per day? Yeah. Right. Back then, I drop my phone constantly. I hit people with it. I hit things with it. Still calling people. Yeah. Yeah, that's why Nokia was so great. The battery life lasts for several days. You can drop it. You can throw it in your backpack. It's like a tank. It's like a little device that always works when you pick it up. Nowadays, pick up more wallet. Did you know that they're coming up with a new Wazer? Oh, I didn't know that. That's oh, but which is uh, touch screens. Like ah. it's like a flip phone. But then you know how like uh, the Samsung Flow. Yeah. Motorola. You might like it. <laughs> well, I won't because they 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 oh, like, they already they were, when you flip open it's like an iPhone. But they already missed the boat, right? Because. Sure, they do. They can have the technology, but now, now you, you got to chase with like the Apple ecosystem, right? They have something huge over just a phone, and even Samsung, they already have their own ecosystem. Although it's not very tightly niche as Apple's, but you got other products that go well with it, like the earbuds, I think the the watch. Is is Motorola or Nokia who got bought out for like five years I or have something? No idea. So, there, have you heard this rumor that? I forgot, it's either Motorola or um, Lokia. Some company paid them a big chunk of money, tell them not to make any cell phone for five years. Wow. They took the deal. Wow. They just, they just totally blocked them. I mean, why do you think Lokia stopped making phone for a while? Oh. They're doing so good. Yeah. Because the other competition wants to get out. in the market. They pay them out, wow. and those CEO in Nokia mm -hmm. want the instant money rather than the future of the company. That's 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 sad. That's sad. But maybe may, they 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 should have taken advantage of that and worked on other things. They can get into different. Well, areas. those people are we feel which way they don't care about how the market is. That's true. Wow, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. But going back to why we recommend this, because Motorola. Buy a modem. Motorola is a good brand for K modems. They've been around for a very long time. And even my old Motorola. Oh man, it's start, it's in start in July 21st. Did so it they just change? Start. Did it change? I bet if I update this, that date might change even more. No, nope, it's still 21st. So you can still order it now. Yeah. So I can't able to upgrade my internet anytime soon. You can borrow my old one. I have an old gigabit ethernet modem. But you should, you should get this one. Um, I need to get this one. Yeah. But for when, when they come to install it, you can use my old one for a bit. I believe okay. it's okay. Actually, the old one is this one, so it's not gigabit. This one is seven hundred megabits, so you won't get the full gigabit. But you can borrow this one. Still faster than what I have yeah. right now. <laughs> I mean, technically, it won't be. But worth would it, it be a problem if yeah. I like you know use that use that one for like a little bit and then yeah. this new one come and just I could just switch it. The performance just kind of rise mm -hmm. by itself, right? Yeah, you, you when you switch it, you do have to um, update it. You have to kind of go to your configuration and update it. But it's it's relatively easy, and you can do it without contacting support. When you say update it, up, you mean update it in the modem or update what? Update it in your because with the cable modem, there is what's called a MAC ID. 
that's attached oh. to K modem. And this needs to match what they have in the ISP, your internet service provider. So basically, oh. you connect this to your line, and then you open your your um, Xfinity app, and you tell them you want to update your modem to this one, and then they'll they'll send a signal to the ISP. And I should be able to get an app on my cell phone or something, right? Yeah, and do it mm -hmm. remotely. Yeah, and oh, that should be that should be too hard as long as they have something we know. Sure. Yeah, you can borrow this modem for as long as you need um, until you get the the new one. But this one only limits you to seven hundred megabits. Uh, so basically, you're going to be paying for one gigabit, but you can only use seven hundred. I have is... twenty four right now. Yeah. Do you think I will complain? Yeah, you will complain. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the upload is not the limitation because we're doing a lot of live stream. You care about the upload. We want to maximize our upload because right now the reason why I can upload to uh, Amazon, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, all at okay, once. Okay, so here here aside my other questions. Right. So Xfinity had this um, data cap at one point two terabyte. Yes. So for what we do, you see how we pass out like video yes. like almost every night. Yes. And it will be even more in the futures. Yes. Do you think that one point two terabyte it will be a trouble or it would never be? It shouldn't be a problem because uh, we're only streaming at ten eighty p. So okay. when when we stream to four channels like that, I use the same stream. So each channel is three megabits, right? So if you think about three megabits per second, we can do the math right now. So let me open up. Because uh... I I think a lot of people didn't realize that now, people use the internet just to browse stuff, right? Yeah. Or it work. Yeah. So that's like a, I don't know, limitation, the matter. Yeah. But nowadays, if you, I think we both realize that if you try to buy some computer parts, yep. especially the streaming stuff yep. on Amazon, the organ meaning that a lot of people is streaming. Yeah. So then you have the gears. Yep. You have the mic. You have everything. But yep. it's your internet capable for you to do that. Yes. Right. So you want good upload speed to stream. And realistically, most people are not crazy like us. They stream to one platform. If they're twitching, they stream to Twitch. If they want to do YouTube, they'll stream to YouTube. We are streaming to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Amazon because we want to reach everyone. Uh, it's a mm -hmm. great time to reach everyone. And I actually recommend if people are streaming to build out their network in multiple platforms because you don't know which one is going to last and which one will do well. Or if multiple ones do well, you have a chance to reach more people. Yeah, I mean, just for like, yeah. Have we had try, they try to ban TikTok? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you could be wasting your time building up your TikTok so, profile, and if it's banned, you lose everything, right? So that's mm -hmm. why you want to have multiple platforms that you grow out. So now going back to the math, the cool thing is I stream three megabits to each of those platforms, and then I stream three mm -hmm. megabits to you, so you can see the signal. So technically, I'm streaming to five locations. So that's fifty megabits per yes. video. Yeah, per second. That's oh, that's fifteen megabits per second, right? So then now we have sixty seconds in a minute, and if I do one hour, I'm streaming a hot nine hundred megabits, right? So times thirty. Yeah. Let's assume that we do one video per day. Uh, only assume one video per day. <laughs> sure. So nine hundred megabits is that's one one hour video times thirty, right? So that's. 220, so 27. Two, right, that number. Did I do it right? Is that 2700 yeah. or 20, 278? 27,000. Oh, yeah, 27,000, right? So that's 27 megabits. Megabits. MB. Yeah, two megabytes. So you want to convert that to megabytes, right? Because your, your limit is in megabytes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, that's 1.2. Right. So that's about three. Oh. So it's a little bit over. I have it. That's over. So it's, yeah. it's quite a bit over. But this is at the extreme. So if, we, if, we're, if we're streaming this much, then you have to break over that cap. So, but you're not going to stream that much. Don't worry. But, okay. So the cap right now is lifted as well. Because if you look at Xfinity, so um, they have a cap at one point two terabyte. Yes, but it's oh 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 shoot! This is only three gigabyte. A terabyte is is a thousand. It's... Wait. Yeah, it's over. Wait. A terabyte gigabyte is this... one thousand. Yeah, megabyte. so this is three terabytes, right? 
Yes. No. So it's megabits wait. to terabyte. Is that that's not right? Oh, that's not right. Is it? Megabits to terabytes. Huh. In that case, <laughs> yeah. no, that can't be. Wait. It is. Wait. So okay, hang on. New window. How many how many terabytes are in one megabyte? Or how yeah. how, how many megabytes in a terabyte? How many megabytes in a terabyte? Yeah, okay, we're right, we're right. Because a terabyte... Oh, gosh. Yeah. There <laughs> you go. Okay. okay. All right, so I'm, so we're fine. Yeah, yeah, we're I'm totally fine. fine. We're totally fine. Because this is megabytes. We're not talking about gigabytes, right? Yes. Megabytes. So if you want to do gigabytes here, this is where we want to go. Gigabytes, right? So now it should mm -hmm. be 3.3 .3 gigabytes, which is nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because yeah. they give you one terabyte, which is a thousand gigabytes. Mm -hmm. Is it a thousand or a hundred? We get, we get. Uh, uh, How many gigabytes in a terabyte? It's a thousand, right? A thousand. So you can have a thousand gigabyte. We're good. You're we plenty, are good. <laughs> you're plenty good. <laughs> right. Okay. I could do five video per day. Yes. For the whole month, yes. still good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Where are we gone? We're okay, good. And plus, do you know that Xfinity is lifting it, right? So, I did not Xfinity uh, gigabit, uh, no, sorry, Xfinity data cap removed, right? Because temporary, they're removing it right now. Like, everyone is removing it. Temporary? Yes. Uh, we're not going to talk about the reason why because we don't want to mention that word. But, um, okay. Basically, Comcast, AT&T drop their caps, but not permanently. Uh, only for the time being. Yeah. The cap will not. It's not about what I want to do. It won't. Yeah, do, it so. won't affect us. Yeah. Yeah, you'll oh, be totally good. good. So you're set. Get gigabit Ethernet, and then get yourself one of these freaking crazy future-proof Motorola eighty six hundred. I want to borrow yours first because yeah. it's gonna take a while. Yeah. I want to get my uh, gigabyte up uh, ASAP. Yes. Yeah. So. Definitely, definitely. This is a good one. And then we should talk a little bit about um, routers too, because if people are gonna get a cable modem, it's a good time to also update your router because a person will have to knack your Nighthawk. Which one? Uh, no, hold on. I'm looking at my app right now. <laughs> I don't remember. Where's my app? There you go. Tell me what. What kind of router do I have, Playhawk? Oh, I don't know. How long ago did you buy it? Uh, not too long ago. Oh, is it? Do you know if it's um, Wi-Fi six or AC or ten eighty? Um, is it the AC bandwidth? Eight oh three. I can't connect to my router. Why? 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 I'll do that later. It's okay. So basically. Routers have changed a lot in the recent technology time period. Even though they're still using a 2.4 gigahertz band and as I had this one. Band. You have this one. They all kind of look like this, by the way. So F1. No, I have this one. You have this exact one. Okay, this is a Nighthawk yeah. set. Okay, a lot of them look the same. All right. So no, I have AC1900. I have this one. Are you, okay, oh, fine. So this is a pretty good one because if you have the AC1900, then this one should have um, the Wi-Fi is AC. Yeah, yeah, the AC9600. So this one does Wi-Fi AC, which is Wi-Fi 5. The newer technology is Wi-Fi 6, which is the AX technology. Hmm. So you could update yours to a new modem, but you don't have to. Now, the problem with Netgear is they don't have ability to reuse your router easily. I always recommend people getting a Zeus router because a Zeus router, they have what's called the mesh system. The mesh system is oh. really cool. Um, the way the mesh system works, and let me explain Even this to like you. Like the mesh I have? Yeah, like the mesh force that we're looking into, which is another cool mm -hmm. device. But AI mesh technology is freaking amazing because the way that they allow you to use your older modem as a node right so say okay so say your house is big like this you buy mm -hmm. a new modem 
the new modem should be the most modern modem of your household. But you could put your old modem as a mesh node. And your old modem carries the same technology now as your new modem, except now it broadcasts the signal to different locations for you. And it's a seamless, wow. it's a seamless experience as you walk around the house because the AI mesh technology will find the nearest router and connect to it automatically, but your device doesn't have to worry about it because your device uses one single SSID throughout the whole system. And security protocols are respected too. For example, if you have a kid in a house and you have restricted them on your main router to different websites or to the time of day when they can use their device, it is honored through all of the other mesh nodes in the house. Whereas if you use, like, sometimes you can build your own, like, kind of uh, access points by having your old router as an access point. Well, the problem with that mm -hmm. is that you can't carry over security protocols and you also can't carry the same SSID. So as you walk around mm -hmm. the house, you have different SSID. But if you buy any of the modern Azus router, they all have the ability to do AI mesh, which means you can use your old router as a mesh node in addition to your new router as a main mesh node. And then now you have not only if you update your router you not only have a newer router but you also have expanded range because your old router now helps to boost your range you're not getting rid of your old router and that's really really cool that's so for the old router yeah. all you have to do is just plug it into power and it should able to yeah so work what you do is you there's a there's a slight procedure to it, okay? It's very easy to set up. So you have to make sure that both... When you say old router, it has to be the same brand or any brand will work? It has to be the same brand. That's why I'm recommending okay. Asus. And unfortunately, Netgear doesn't have this flexibility, which is why I'm recommending the Asus router here. But, 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 Yes. If Netgear, I buy something like this. Ah, yes, you're talking about the Mesh Force. Mesh Force is... Um, Should work, right? Yes. So let me let me bring up Mesh Force because Mesh Force is actually a really cool technology too. <laughs> let me add it to our what? That's Flash. What? Mesh <laughs> Force. So they have Mesh Force has three models or two really important ones. They have the Mesh Force M3, which is suited for a bigger house, and they have M3s, and they have the, that's why I have. Yeah, they have the smaller one, which is. Um, the M3. Did I mess this up? Yeah, the M3 is a smaller one, which is for a smaller house. But basically, mm -hmm. <clears throat> let me paste this so that people can um, access it. Give me one moment. So this, these are mesh-based router. There's a limitation to this as well because it's not a full Ethernet in, um, setup where most router has four Ethernet ports, the Mesh mm -hmm. Force has only one Ethernet port per node. So, but then to be honest, besides your office, yes. right? If you're doing it in a house, yes. besides your office that has a computer, yes. most of the household's device are Wi Fi. Yes. So that's even my TV is a Wi Fi. Yes. Yes. So that's why Mesh Force technology. It, it, it's smart. They're focusing on and the, they're banking off that fact. Oh, hey, the silencer joined our stream. Woohoo! Hey, silencer. Happy hey, to see silencer. you. Hey, silencer. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like the video if you like, the, you like to see what we're talking about. We're talking about different modems, if you should rent one or buy one for your ether, internet service. So, which one do you use, uh, the silencer? Are you with Comcast or are you with Cox or AT&T? And do you own or rent your modem? We'd love to hear. So as, as the silencer answers that question, let me add both of these mesh system to our stream so people can click on them if mm -hmm. they want to look into a mesh system. So now the mesh system we're talking about here is a little bit different than um, a, a traditional router, right? Because uh, for mm -hmm. example, a traditional router... It would do the job by enhancing uh, the Wi-Fi signal though. Yes, you can definitely do that too. But you, I still, I still personally would recommend at least one traditional router because you have these Ethernet ports, which mm. means your your router acts as multiple places where you can actually plug in Ethernet cable and get the fastest. You're the type that love to play with cables, aren't you? Well, because cable <laughs> always provides you the highest speed. Oh, I know yes. that. 
But if you, if you, why do you think I have a, why do you think I have a blue RJ45 lining from my route all the way to outside? Ah yes, there <laughs> we go. Room. So you understand? Oh yeah, the silencer has net gear as well. He uses charter service, and it's good so far for us here at my home. So with charter service, what kind of internet speed are you getting? And are you renting or buying your modem? Do you own the Netgear modem or are you just renting? So I'm curious to see what he, what speed he's getting and if he's owning or renting it. But okay. Yes, so, am I renting or buying? You don't never ask me that. Yeah, I did. No. I, did? I, I asked you if you're renting or owning or buying. I guess it's the same thing. I currently renting. Yeah. But I'm getting of that. And I'm gonna buy a new one, ah, but not for the same you. service. Right, of course, of course. Yeah, we know which one you're gonna get because you want to get this this crazy Motorola SB twenty eighty six hundred, which is on sale right future, now. Future, future proof. Dude, it's on sale right now. You're saving twenty bucks, and it's future proof. And the cool thing is, it has multiple Ethernet ports. You can't tell by looking at this picture, but if you go to Motorola, using a paper clip and peel it off. Yes. Just like that. Just like that. Where's their website? So, dude, I thought I just had it here. Uh, Motorola's website. Oh, right hey. there. Yeah. So you go to Motorola's website, and you just use a paper clip. You peel off the sticker, and look at that. It's so beautiful. You technically have four Ethernet ports. Mm -hmm. Wait, for port warning, only connect your port warning device to Ethernet ports and two, one and two. Oh wait, three and four are not used for port bonding. Why not? Maybe there actually you could plug in different computer into it. Mm, different see. device. Let's see. So here. This is interesting. So technically you don't you only need two. Yeah. Until maybe they just build it in there in case eventually they might have firmware upgrades so that you can able to, you know, utilize those two outlet. Because right now it's totally not usable. Yeah, so I don't know what it's for. Okay, so the question is, I want to use port bonding. How do I access the other three ports? So to enable Ethernet ports on the back of the modem, the other three ports are hidden underneath the plastic adhesive back cover. Oh, hang on, sorry. So the silence says, I'm not sure about speed and all. Uh, it, all I know is to turn on Wi-Fi <laughs> and connect to it. Yeah. You just got it to work. Sweet. I mean, that's cool too because uh, you focus on making beats, you're focusing on making music, you're focusing on other things about life. That's why you come to Utechpia because we're a tech channel to educate you on techs, right? Because that's my passion. That's Jeremy's passion too. We love technology. We love photography, and that's why we love wait, wait, talking wait. about it. I use technology. Ah. So I slightly different. But I you will, will start. You will start to love it because okay, you're learning you so much about it. About that. Yeah. <laughs> But let's figure this out. So the cover was added on the back of the modem to reduce confusion regarding whether if the 8600 is a router or a bridge oh, modem, bridge right? Modem. And it is a bridge with the ability to bond ports if your router or other equipment supports it. Ah, so it's a bridge modem. I quite don't understand what a bridge modem is. So ports two and three are for bridging, or three and four are for bridging, not bonding. So you can bridge. What is a bridge things. modem? I don't know. Let's see. Let's Google that. It's like there's like if I remember, it's like you can actually hook a multiple modem to to do something. So like, a bridge modem. So when you have two. NAT devices connected in series. For example, a modem with the built-in NAT capabilities is connected to a router, which is also a NAT device. It is advised to configure modem to bridge mode to avoid conflict. Uh, what is bridge mode on a router? On a this is a what is bridge mode on a modem? What is bridge mode on a modem? Okay, bridge that's a become a bridge modem. <laughs> Come on. Okay, sorry. Bridge, Keep I'm confused too. Wait, what? What is bridge mode on a modem, right? Sorry, I didn't understand your 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 comment there. How, no, no comments. Keep going. When to put modem into bridge mode? Okay, here you go. Oh my god. 
Okay, when two NAT devices are connected in series, for example, a modem and a router, it is advised to configure a modem in bridge mode to avoid conflict. Okay, well, for now, let's just say this is beyond my beyond the scope of this video. I, this is getting too yeah, nerdy. Right I, I don't know enough to talk about it, and I don't think a lot of people will care at this point. I no. Just know that this modem is capable of up to six. Okay, then, then it's, it's a lie. It's not actually capable of up to six megabits per second because ports three and four are not for bonding. So this modem technically can only get up to two. Two. Right. So now this. Still good. Yes. Hey, look. That's us. We're live. It takes a little while for us to like show up there, right? There it is. Yay. Look at Jeremy dancing. TikTok material right there. Does it really say six megabits? I think the seller might be the one that puts us. Oh no, it does say six megabits. It's six. Well, um, I, I don't know how they do it, but yeah, it's funny because like you, you can, Ethernet port here is one, but you know it's the word confusion. But anyway, we well, blabber. It works. It works. Yeah. So if I if this model can get me beyond gigabyte, yeah, I it's, am happy. It's definitely a multi gigabit modem for sure so I mean to, to wrap it up uh, the answer is we should definitely buy a modem because wait wait so buy or went right a cable modem right whoops wrong thumbnail yes buy or rent a modem so what is your answer Jeremy I'm buying I'm buying a model water MB866 why? Well, save money, faster, and I don't have to own people something. Yeah. Like for example, later on, if I do this and not want to service, I have to ship them, yeah. ship them back the modem. I don't want to do that. Yep. And with the newer modem, it's like Jeremy says, it's faster because you have newer technology that squeezes out the performance better. You also have better equipment because the modem that they rent to you isn't the good, good brand. I've had them send me UB brand. I've had them send me like some weird off brand, which is not really as supported as like a Motorola or a Netgear. So I don't know what brand I have with AT and T. They have an AT and T logo on top of it. That's pretty it's much it. Rebranded, yeah. So I mean, oh hey, the silencer is drinking some rum and Pepsi. Party on, man! Party on! I have mango sparkling water. Nice. So we're all drinking some good liquids tonight. That's cool, that's cool. And then if you are debating whether to rent or buy, we always recommend buy because of the reasons Jeremy just said. And also the one to buy right now is a Motorola SB... Oh, sorry, the Motorola MB8600 MB. down in the link below because that one is feature-proof up to multi-gigabits and it's a Motorola, so you're backed by high performance. Make sure you check with your cable modem or cable provider that that modem is compatible. But as far as we know, it's compatible for Comcast, and also right here it says it's compatible with Cox as well, mm -hmm. as well as other services too. But still, make sure you check. Oh, here you can get the full listing. It's approved by Comcast, Xfinity, Xfinity One, Cox, Cable One uh, for all speeds, including Comcast Gigabit, Cox Gigablast. Um, it's not compatible with RCN. So just keep that in mind, and of course this, this modem is not for fiber optics, it's not for DSL, it's not for satellite services from Verizon, AT&T, CenturyLink, Frontier, or others. So mainly Comcast and Cox and Cable One. So I don't know how Cox or uh, um, Cable One, whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. but here's another catch though. So if you are getting um, Comcast mm -hmm. or Xfinity service, all they do is basically make sure the cable is go outside of your house and right. you have connections. Whatever's inside, you have to do it yourself. Yes. So rather you use the like, modem or you buy your own modem, you have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. It doesn't matter. Like you don't have to uh, about breaking it because you're gonna do it yourself anyway. Yeah. They're not helping you. Right. Right. Which is both of these are actually pretty simple. Yes. Pack it in, set it up, you know, just like that. Yeah. It should be straightforward. As long as you make sure that it's compatible with your provider and this. 
this right here on our screen says that this motor is compatible. Plus, you're, you, you know Motorola is a good brand. So, I mean, in a nutshell, that kind of wraps up our video. We recommend buying, and if you're buying, we recommend getting this one. Just make sure it's compatible with your provider. Oh, one last update on yes. the TV thing. Yes. You know, the TV, how they said, um, if I have to use TV, I have older TV, they have to give you a TV box. Yeah. But you have a smart TV that they don't charge for because like, you can actually download app in your smart TV oh. that's free. So I'm actually thinking if I'm getting that service, ah. I'm still thinking, then I I would rather just buy myself another smaller smart TV. That way, actually the money I save from that getting that 10 bucks per month, yeah. getting that box, I could buy myself a TV already. Yeah, nice new TV too. Of course your wife's gonna kill you again because you have too many TVs and your kid's watching too much TV. Yeah, I know. But that's a debate for a different video. I gotta find a balance. That's a debate for a different video. So stay tuned guys, we're gonna have another live stream soon, right after this one, right? Maybe, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. But thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for you know commenting and watching us. We love the participation, the thumbs up, the stars, whether you're on Amazon Live, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we will catch you next time. Signing out. My name is David. Don't, That's Jeremy. don't buy my modem yet. Let me buy it first. Yeah. Give, give Jeremy 10 minutes, <laughs> then go at it and buy the modem. All right? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. We're signing out. Signing out on many different platforms. So hang on with us. We should be signing out in just a moment. So let's count out three, two, one. And